pipe. This parameter defines the Apple ProRes encoding method. You may choose between Apple ProRes 422 and Apple ProRes 422 HQ. Loop Play. This parameter turns the loop playback of a clip on and off. Format Media. This parameter is used to format the currently selected storage device. You may wish to set the real name parameter to the desired value before performing this operation. To get out of a erase of the media if you inadvertently do this, simply select any other button selection. Delete Clips. This parameter can be used to delete all of the clips on the media. Alternately, you can delete one clip at a time using the dedicated Delete Clip button on the UI. Real Name. This parameter determines the real name associated with all clips generated while using this setting. The real name is a number between 1 and 999. It is historically linked to the naming conventions used for tape-based media. The real name is an incrementing three-digit value that works with EDLs. For this reason, the parameter does not have a none selection. All clips will be associated with a real name. The real name parameter also is the name of the media that will appear when the storage module is mounted on Mac OS X desktops. This is why before formatting Key Pro Media, you may want to make sure that the value is what you want. Clip Name. This parameter determines the clip name associated with all clips generated while using this setting. The clip name is either Clip or SC for Scene. SC can be particularly helpful if you are working with a line script or a shot list broken down by scene numbers. Clip Number. This parameter determines the clip number from 1 to 999 that follows the clip name and is associated with all clips generated while using this setting. In other words, if you set the value to 1 and you record several takes, they will all be associated with this value until you change it. Clip Append. This parameter is used with the parameter 17.5 alpha append to append a text value after the clip number or have no text appended. Alpha append. This allows you to select any number of letters, A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. Take. This parameter determines the take number from 1 to 999 that follows the clip name and clip number, followed by an alpha append, if selected, and it's generated for all clips while using the setting. The take number is an auto-incrementing parameter. This means that if you make selections for other parameters and those do not change, you will simply produce a greater take value with each recording. Example, scene 1B take 1 would then auto-increment to scene 1B take 2. You can also manually adjust this as you need. Let's look at an example of how we can set the clip naming conventions. First, we're going to set it to scene as opposed to clip. Next, we're going to give it a clip number of 5. Our next value will be our alpha append. In this case, we're going to elect to actually alpha append the value. And in this case, we'll make it A. This will automatically take us to take 1. So the first thing that we'll record will be scene 5A, take 1. Remember that you will be entering the media menu more often than the config menu in most cases to name the clips you will be recording. To exit the media menu, simply hit the media button again or you can hit stop. Now that you've learned about how to name clips and configure media settings, let's use the status menu to determine if everything is configured correctly. Status does not require the user to hit stop like the config and media menus do. It is an at-a-glance overview of your system. After pushing status, you will see the input values you've configured for the video and audio, as well as the incoming video format that is being auto-detected by the Key Pro. If you are not sending valid video to the Key Pro, you will see the status menu displaying in, no input, and record, no input. If you do see this prompt, be sure that the appropriate cabling from the camera to Key Pro has been performed, as well as the correct menu selections for video input and audio input. If you are correctly set up, you will notice that you will see the incoming video signal, 
as an example, 1080i 2997. If you have not selected any conversions, then the incoming video format will match the record format. If you've selected a conversion of the incoming video, it will be noted on the record line of the display. The values to the right of the display denote the incoming video and also the selected audio. Finally, you can determine whether there are any alarms by hitting the select up arrow. If there are not, then the system will display system normal. Like the config and media menus, simply hit status again to exit the menu. Let's look a little bit more at what we see on the VFD display. In the normal transport mode, you'll notice that we have a value for the clip, which is the name of the clip, the reel, and its value. You'll also notice that it says D1. This is referring to the Key Pro storage module, and you'll notice 99%, which means its remaining capacity. As you make recordings, this will change and the number will go down. Finally, we've got the timecode value, which when you're in complete stop is zeroed. If we go to playback, notice that the timecode value rolls, and that if we hit stop once, it will flash because we're actually paused. If we want to return to an E to E state, we simply hit stop one more time. Now I'm going to connect an SDI output for live monitoring and playback review. I'm gonna just simply frame up my shot. And I also have the option of whether I want to monitor in HD or SD. In this case, I've actually got an HD monitor, so let's go ahead and monitor in HD. I'll go ahead and now I'll make my recording. Once I stop recording, I can go back in and actually perform playback. When you first power up Key Pro, it will look for the available media and mount it. You may notice that the UI displays media mounting on the upper left-hand corner of the display. You'll also notice that once the media is mounted, the LED light will light green in the upper left-hand corner. To properly remove media, hit the slot button. You will note that the information for the clip in the upper left-hand corner of the UI now states not available, as does the reel. And you'll also notice that where the disk information and the percentage remaining were now reads no slot. It is now safe to remove the Key Pro storage module. You can do this simply by pushing in on the media release button and pulling out on the Key Pro storage module. You can now connect your media directly via FireWire 800 to your Mac computer. The KeyPro storage module features two types of connections, the serial ATA connection for when it's inside of the KeyPro, as well as a FireWire 800 connector. This is what we'll be using to connect it to the MacBook Pro computer. One simple cable connection for both power and data transfer. So let's go ahead and connect this. Again, one simple cable no proprietary readers, and you'll also notice that it's going to mount on the Mac OS X desktop transparently because it's formatted HFS, native for Mac OS X. Now that it's mounted on the desktop, you'll notice that it actually says 001. Again, this is related to the real name that we put into the Key Pro parameters. So all of our media on the drive is actually labeled as 001 for the reel, as well as the volume mounting on the desktop is 001. So we'll go ahead and open this up, take a look at our various clips. So you'll notice that all of these clips have logical names, like scene one, take one, and these are all based on the parameters that we set on the Key Pro. You'll also notice that they all have .mov at the end, at the end of each of them as the extension. Remember that we're actually creating native QuickTime files in Apple ProRes 422 or Apple ProRes 422HQ. And if we just take a look through these, you'll notice any number of these clips we can just quickly scroll through and review. Next, let's decide to actually import these into Final Cut. 
So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to choose one clip. And I'm going to actually import scene 12B, take five. Notice that it imports without any issue. I'll open the clip up and I can play it immediately. It's instantly ready to edit from the KeyPro storage module. However, we should note that it's always a great idea to back up your media and not play it back from the native storage. So if I want, I can go ahead, scrub through the material. I'm gonna choose my edit points, make an in point, make an out point, and go ahead and drop this to my timeline. And again, real-time playback of the clip from the timeline and the KeyPro storage module. It's really that simple. So we've seen how easy KeyPro is to configure and to operate. KeyPro is a very useful, easy to use solution for bridging production and post-production because it records an Apple ProRes 422 and Apple ProRes 422 HQ files. It also features up, down, and cross conversion. Because it has a well thought out support system like the KeyPro Exoskeleton and the rod end plates, you can work with a wide variety of other products like battery adapter plates, things like mat boxes could be mounted to the rods. Again, a flexible solution with KeyPro at the heart. Finally, we hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of KeyPro. For more detailed information, look to the user manual, any supplemental information that's provided with the product, and of course, you can always visit www.aja.com.